2021 Toyota Highlander XSE all-wheel drive dual air conditioning front and rear got it 2021 and the refrigerant is YF refrigerant 920 grams plus or minus 30 grams ND8 Denso 12 peg oil we're running for the last few minutes where we're, it says, it says it's going into three minutes, but it's actually going into like five minutes right now. We're looking at the pressure right now. We've been staying steady at 28 PSI. You can see it going all the way across minute after minute. The high side is steadily climbing down as the load comes off inside. As we climb over to, okay, we got a super heat of 3.9. We got a sub cooling of 20 and it's actually 20. So I'm taking it right here after the condenser. Here's the high side, here's the high side switch, liquid line, right there is where I'm taking my, for my superheat, subcooling, subcooling, because it's on the liquid line. But you see there's an internal heat exchanger. Now, if I take this, and if I could get it over there, it'll drop from 20, maybe I can get it over. Let's, let's show you this. So this is what the internal, if, if it's working, if it'll do it, I'm trying to get over to it. Can I clamp onto it? I don't know if I could get there. I don't know if I have a good bite on it. Ah, 33, 35, 36, 37, 38, 37, 38. So that is what the internal heat exchanger, remember we're 20 something over here, we're 38 over there. The internal heat exchanger is removing heat out of the liquid line so there's more energy to do more work as it passes through the expansion valve, giving you extra load capacity. That is what the internal heat exchanger, this was, this is a good example one. Under Some vehicles at different temperatures and pressures do different things. Some almost have no change at these lower temperatures. You just have to do several thousand cars. Now you'll learn it faster than that, a few hundred. Uh, here what we're looking at, so you can see the superheat, you can see the subcooling, we're up to 40 now. So that's how much work that internal heat exchanger is doing on this vehicle. We went from 20 something to 40. Uh, temperature, we're still staying at 39.9, rock steady on the temperature. You can see we're 63 degrees outside. 62, 62 by this one, 63 by this one. And then what you do is, uh, give your final report all these get snapshot and goes goes to the customer okay so here's our final report let me see if I could zoom in on there all this is live off the Bluetooth data goes through the software it does all the calculations and all the math for you so you get this and this is what you get and remember you have a rear air conditioning unit on this one too so I just want you to see what the what year, make model vehicle, what the refrigerant charges are, what it looks like under these ambient conditions. Uh, there's no reference material that's really good out there from whether it's Toyota, Chevy, Honda, Acura, Ferrari, Lamborghini, it doesn't matter. The information that we get on air conditioning at different ambient temperatures and low conditions really sucks. See you guys. This is a field piece software. Field piece software works with the field piece um, SM 480V. We have the field piece vacuum pump, the field piece uh, wireless Bluetooth. Uh, come on, brain, end of the day, I'm tired. Scale. Uh, you have the field piece temperature and humidity. Thumb ours, this is the JL3RH. And that's the same one that I'm also using that I get the temperature on the inside that you see, right? Let's see if it'll zoom in. Will it focus right there? Sticking down inside the dash. And I'll see everybody later. We'll uh, get out of here and uh, show you this one more time. Boom. That goes to your customer. Every shop should be giving their customer this. We're going into the 22nd century. There's no reason for anybody to be using analog gauges anymore. People are paying hundreds of dollars and on repairs, thousands of dollars to repair for the AC for some guy to write down in pencil or a pen what he thinks he read off his analog gauges. See you guys later.